starts to create two-dimensional lists and even multi-dimensional lists, you can think of the two-dimensional lists as a list of lists, but it's really similar to a spreadsheet. Here I want to keep track of the high and low temperatures for a week. And so what I have is assigning values to my temps list that are comma delimited list in and of themselves. And so if we think of each of these items inside the, the square brackets as being a day, and the first value is the low temperature, and the next value is the high temperature. In essence, we can think of this as creating a table with rows and columns. And since there are two values inside each of those square brackets, I'm going to get two columns. And then there are seven sets of brackets, which gives me my seven rows. And we can think of those rows as being Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. So if I wanted to know what the low temperature was for Wednesday, I could access temps element three, that's gonna be my row index, column zero, and the value would be 60. Let me go over to Python and create a project that will use this information. We wanna find the average low and the average high, maybe as well as what day was the lowest and what day was the highest. Here's my Python program to examine the low and high temperatures for a week and I create a two-dimensional list of my temps as we saw previously. Each day has a low temp and a high temp and the days are comma separated and each day is in square brackets with all of those being in square brackets. One way you can kind of tell how many dimensions there are is how many square brackets are there to begin with and we'll see a little bit of difference we create a three-dimensional array at the end of this video. I'm going to start by printing a chart of all the temperatures, and I created a list here of the days of the week, Sunday through Saturday. And I'm going to print a string of temperatures for week. I'm going to print day, low, and high, and then just some equal sign underneath that to separate the headers of my chart. And then I have four variables here, low temp, high temp, low day, and total low. And in essence, we're going to find the lowest day and the highest day and the temperatures for those days. Very similar to what we did in the list examples a couple videos ago on revisiting that Olympic judging project. So I sent the, set them all to the Sunday temperature uh, for high and low, and Sunday being the high day and the low day. Assuming that Sunday was our only day, it would be the high and the low. And then I'm gonna have a loop for I in range, and I'm gonna do the length of days. That's gonna be seven. I could have just put range seven here. That would have worked as well. And I'm gonna print then the days element i that's going to pull from my list sunday monday tuesday and then the temperature for that day that's low and the temperature of that day that's high so i'm accessing row i but column zero and column one if we're thinking of this as a table i'm going to increment total low by temps i zero and total high by temps element i element one then we use some ternary statements here to determine if the day is lower than the current low day, and if it is, I'm going to change the value of low day. And then I'm going to, since I might have two days that are the same or three days that are the same, I want to recognize that it that low temperature occurred on multiple days. So I'm also going to check to see if it's equal to low temp. And if it is, I'll concatenate that day to the low day. And we'll see that happen in this particular data. Then I want to change the low temp if the low temp for that day is lower than low temp. Otherwise, I'll leave it at low temp. And then I simply do the same thing for the high days. And again, I'm going to show multiple high days if they are equivalent to the highest temperature. And the only thing that's printing here is just the information for that particular day. But I'm going to use these values then in determining the average low and the average high, dividing those by 7. And then I'm simply going to print what the average low temp was, what the lowest temp for the week was on which day or days, the average high temp, and then the highest temp was what on what day or days. Let me run this. And so here then is our output. We have the chart showing the high and low temperatures for the days. And you can see that that reflects what I have in my temps two-dimensional list. And then the average low was 55.4. The lowest temp was 51 and it occurred on both Tuesday and Saturday. And then the average high temp was 78.9, and the highest temp was 86 on Thursday. 
That's how we use a two-dimensional list. Let's talk a little bit about a three-dimensional list. You can have as many dimensions in a list as you need, but I'm hard-pressed to think of a project I've done in any language, whether it's C-sharp or Swift or Java or, or Python, where I've used more than three dimensions. So let's take a look at a three-dimensional list. So here I have temps. I want to keep track of the low and high temp for a week, but over a three-week period. And so I'm going to make each week a separate worksheet, if we use the Excel analogy, containing rows and columns. And so if we look at the square brackets in my temps assignment, the orange brackets that marks that this, is, that this is a list. And then inside that list are three lists. The first list of those three is enclosed in red brackets. And that's going to be my first worksheet, which contains all the temperatures for week one, high and low, for Sunday through Saturday. And then the next line, the ones that are in the green brackets, would be the second week, highs and lows. And then the blue brackets on that third line would be the third week. And in essence, I get three worksheets, each with seven rows and two columns. And they're indexed, the rows are indexed from zero to six, and the columns from zero to one on each of those worksheets. If I want to pull out a temperature, let's say I want to know what the Wednesday temperature was of that first week, week zero. Then I could print temps, element zero, that's going to be worksheet one, row index 3, and then column index 0 would give me the low temp for Wednesday, which would be 60. If I wanted to pull up the high temperature for the second week, that would be index 1 of my first dimension. I want to pull up the high temperature of Thursday of that week. It's going to be element 1, element 4, which would be my Thursday value, and element 1, and that's a value of 88. I can access all these values in loops. I might need to use some nested loops, and I'm going to demonstrate that now in Python. Here is my Python program where I'm examining three weeks worth of weekly data of high and low temperatures for the week and create a three-dimensional list named temps. And each row in my assignment represents, in essence, a worksheet or the the elements of the first dimension. And then in each worksheet, I have the low temp and the high temp as a two-dimensional list. I want to print a chart of the temps like we did before. So I have my days of Sunday through Saturday as a list. I'm going to print uh, the headers here. We looked at that in the previous example. Nothing changed there. Um, here, though, when I assign low temp and high temp to that very first temperature of the first week, I've had to add the third dimension in of element zero. So this would be Worksheet 0, row 0, column 0, and the high would be worksheet 0, row 0, column 1. My low and high day then equals days sub 0, which means my Sunday, and I'm going to assign that that's week 1. Week 1, I, I added 1 to the 0 here because our users are not going to probably make a whole lot of sense with week 0 since we start counting the 0 in programming. Usually our user does not. So I set it to week 1. Total low and total high equals zero. This can be our sums to get our average. And then I have a loop for WK in range three. WK stands for week. This is my first dimension range. I just set it to a hard copy of three. And then I'm gonna print each week at a time. So I have a little header that says week and then a string of WK plus one. Again, adding one for our user's sake. So WK would start at zero, but we're gonna show one for the user. So for the user will be one, two, three. WK will go from zero to two. Then within each week, I'm going to use the same loop I did before, just look at the length of day, so Sunday through Saturday, um, seven days. This, I could have put a seven in there rather than length of days. I'm going to print the days, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then the low temperature for that week and for that day. So my week is going to be the week, or WK element is going to be the week, I is going to be the day, zero is low. And then same thing here, but one is high. I'm going to increment total low and total high as I go through these nested loops each time by the element week, element I0, element week, element I1. And then my low days, I'm simply going to assign the days element I, so the day of the week and the week number, again adding one for our user, to low day if that temperature for that week and that day is lower than the low temp. If it happens to be the same as we did before, I'm going to I'm going to concatenate 
that additional day on the low day. So we'll show multiple days that match that same high or same low. And then change the low temperature again if that temperature is less than low temp. Really nothing different than what we did before, just it's a little more complicated because we also have now the different uh, third dimensional values in there. So I had to make sure I added a WK on each of the references to my array. So everything's referenced as a three dimensional array. Then we find the average low and the average high. So here I divided the low by 21. There's, since there's seven days, of three weeks. I did a little bit different than average high. I took the length of temps because I just want to demonstrate that temps, when you take the length of a multi-dimensional array, it's the number of cells. It's not the number of rows, it's the number of total cells if we use that worksheet analogy or Excel analogy. So I'd have 42 cells. Counting each of these numbers up would be 42. I'm going to only look at the high temperatures, so I'm going to divide that by 2. And then I simply print out the results. Let's watch this run. And so here then is the results. I'm showing each week at a time. The average low temp was 61.1. The average high temp was 11,067. So I got a mistake there that I need to go back and fix. And the lowest temp was 51 on Tuesday of week 1. Tuesday of week 1. And Saturday of week 1. Both those were 51. And the highest temp was 89, which occurred on Monday of week 2. And Tuesday of week 2. And Saturday of week 3. So I just need to fix my high temp. Let's see what happened there. Well, I may have been wrong about the length of temps showing the, being the number of cells. I'm just going to change that to 21. Let's run it again and see what we get. Much better result, 83.4. So if you'd like to create this code, let me just stretch this out a little bit because I notice I cut off a couple lines at the very tail end. So I would encourage you to stop the video at this point and type in this code and run it. Think about the code as you're typing it in, what's happening. Uh, play the part of the computer and keep track of your, of your variables as you create this. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.